I remember it had a cork. I've got a few spots for wine. One, two, three, no. Um, gold on top maybe. Here it is. It's been here for a couple of years. I was out running day, one day, Mitch, and I found this bottle of wine in amongst roadside rubbish. And I go through most roadside rubbish if I'm on foot. And I was shocked when I found a bottle of wine. And I thought, I'm gonna take that home. So I ran home with it for, I don't know, five Ks or something, chugging away with this bottle of wine. I thought, I'm gonna make a film, junk wine. I'm gonna sit around, I'm gonna drink it and make a film out of it. A comment came through on YouTube by a bloke that said, Bo, you're a good storyteller. Why don't you sit in the middle of a field and film it and I would watch it? I thought, gee, that's quite a compliment. So I'm putting these two ideas together and here I am. The next layer is what do I talk about? Tell stories for the next two hours or however long it takes me to drink that? Uh, or do I get some help? So I put it out there on Insta, uh, 400 odd questions came back and I've compiled them here and I'm gonna answer them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Whilst drinking this wine that I found on the side of the road. Boom! I've been convinced ever since I found this that this would be vinegar. But it might not be. This might be, I might be wasting a very good bottle of 20 year old wine on myself in the paddock. Strike me pink, it's bloody drinkable. Righto, question one, let's crack on, eh? How do you balance enjoying your adventures and travels in the moment while still remembering you have to film and capture it all? The beauty of having a film with you or, or filming your experience is that you can, you can continue to unpack it based on that footage for years. And you know what too, it's a third dimension because I can then see me in this place rather than just through my eyeballs. That's pretty remarkable. It's kind of a godly thing having a camera on you when you then get to be behind the camera and watch what you did. Have you always been a storyteller or is it something you've worked hard on over time and with your films? I always thought that great films were spectacular footage and spectacular stories. And it's taken me a long time to realize that, you know what, the everyday stuff, you might be able to turn into something that is uh, not, not always extraordinary, but really palatable as a story and interesting. Junk Paddle's a good example of a story that took time to emerge and sort of surprised me. I originally thought it was a story about making a junk made paddle. Then a story about using that junk made paddle on a river. But you know what, it was always about wood and resources and trees. So the story is not always obvious because it wasn't to me until making the film. At the end of it, oh, bing, it's about wood. I've finished my first glass of junk wine and I'm feeling good. Ah. This question's about the subtext of the storyline in, in um, The Human Being. Hands down, The Human Being is the hardest film that me and Mitch have ever made. Mitch is behind the camera right now. The story wasn't lineal, it wasn't going from A to B to C. It wasn't like my typical journeys where I just picked myself up against a distance or a particular place or a time. All I did was eat beans. So it had to be a story about the internal adventure. That's still a hard story to tell, right? Because it's, it's invisible <laughs> in some ways. Food makes me peppy and creative and more emotive, more energized, healthy. And eating beans only makes me healthy in one particular way, but deadens everything else. I do know it's not off, so the cork hasn't made it go bad. It's very clarity, you know, it's pretty dark, but so it should be, it's 20 years old. I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm only on page two of 30, but uh, I'm, on, I'm on glass two of maybe seven, so I've got to answer my questions a bit quicker. <laughs> Bo, what's your favorite adventuring hat? I've got some footage I can show you right now of a film that's about to be released that, that talks exactly to this. Wear the old school hat, a bit like Burke and Wills. Kind of like this one. I love this one too, but it's gonna be windy. The Forrest Gump style hat. Trouble is people throw things at you when you wear this. So I'm gonna wear my old winterized hat with a, a band. 
Love it. I didn't, I forgot this to take to Africa and I genuinely was mourning it for a day or two. Well, I got to Johannesburg and I'm unpacking my stuff thinking my hat's in here somewhere and it didn't turn up. Man, that was a trip of hat failures, I tell you what, Africa. And I've lost my hat. My precious favorite hat, hand stitched for me. Why run in button-down shirts like this one? Well, because they're cheap, I get them from op shops, and they've got the perfect ability to be chest bare or, you know, one button or three buttons. They're cotton, they're nice and cool. I can roll the arms up, I've got a collar. What's not to like? I only pay a buck for them, right? So if I get nipple chafe, I could just cut the nipple section out. Things are slowing up in the old bow brain. Are you happy? That's a big question. Are you happy? Oh, super happy. I'm in a massive purple patch. Hard work has a lot to do with it. Um, fulfilled relationships has a lot to do with it. Do your little your intro. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose making something that has uh, some sort of impact for other humans, which is in, in my case now storytelling. It has been education and guiding and whatnot, but now it's being a good storyteller. That sort of gives back. When you're alone on journeys, do you have your own two-way conversations? A bit like this. <laughs> Sitting my head in a cupboard all day, sweating like a pig. Although I don't know if pigs sweat this much. Do pigs sweat? I talk to myself a lot out there. I think it's healthy. If you didn't, you'd go a bit bonkers. You built a lot of stuff in your shed, Bo, uh, but did you build the shed? Yep, I've built everything here. Or modified it severely to the point of it being basically new from secondhand stuff. There's a building at the top of the hill um, that's the next film in a few weeks' time. Is there a film you've put a whole bunch of energy into and never released it? We were in Sydney and I thought, Mitch, let's go and um, shoot a film at Bondi. My whole shtick in life is about being sun smart because in Australia, the biggest thing that's going to kill you is the sun. I notice it doesn't have a sun smart sign. General warning should be the, the biggest danger here is the sun. So we're in Bondi and I think I'm going to go out and I'm going to be the sort of sun smart um, advisor for Bondi. <laughs> and it's basically like painting your face like you would paint a house. Like why would I want to ruin this? You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be any older. I don't want to look like leather. Good shade guys. I kind of missed the mark, but 407 questions came through by this morning. And this is one of my favorite. When did you last see Jane Ingram? Um, and that's a reference to my childhood crush. I had a crush on Jane Ingram when I was making this. She was hot. <laughs> I have not seen Jane Ingram since year nine, which makes it 26 years, Jane Ingram, if you're out there. Boisms at, on Instagram, Bowmiles YouTube. Or call Helen and you can have a, have a chat. <laughs> Do you have a, a vision for society and the environment? That's probably too big a question to ask and answer, you know, halfway through a bottle of wine I found on the side of the road. But let's, let's have a crack anyway, right? Uh, I think we need to use more. No, that's, that's come out the wrong way. We need to use less. <laughs> Shoot something about your axemanship journey. You know, it's been kind of a, a side story for me for a few years, and I'm not a good axeman. Jeez, I'm, I'm hopeless compared to the pros. Um, but I like doing it, and, and it feels fantastic. I've never really done something like that before, an anaerobic sport. Yeah, that film's coming up. How do you filter out bad ideas? Uh, you kind of know. You know when you're onto something that's a good idea. You, you don't quite know if it's going to be a, a brilliant idea or, or just a film. I never knew a mile an hour was going to be such a uh, such a crowd pleaser. It was a bit of an off the cuff idea that came from a moment that was very genuine. I was sitting inside, uh, wanting to be outside, and I thought, why don't I run around the block? And that one lap around the block ended up being, why don't I run a marathon around the block? And and then whilst I'm doing that, do all the things that I want to be doing when I was writing my PhD. So it was a very genuine idea and it ends up being translated as a very genuine film and people like it. 
what adventure would you take your daughter on in the future? Well, I have lots of plans for May, but it depends on one, Helen, and two, you. What do you think you want to do in the future? That's wine, love. Bit strong. I think I want to take you on a big river journey and pad you out with lots of floating yeah. devices so that if you go overboard, you'll just bob to the surface. What do you reckon? <laughs> you actually look pissed. Well, it's because I, I think I probably am. How do you define your wealth or worth? So life's pretty good. I, I, I've been unemployed now for 10 months. So uh, wealth, wealth is about now productivity and output and creativity. Wealth and worth is time and being happy with how you split your time. For the first two years I lived here, I just, I came out here with the hoe and got rid of all the weeds manually for months. I'd just come out and do a, you know, a 10 metre square section each night. That was, that was good work. Which animal would you be? I would be a donkey. I think donkeys are very hardy. They don't complain much, they don't seem to. When they've got something to say, you hear it. Do you think more clearly while out running? No, I just think differently. If I go and sit underneath a tree for 10 minutes doing nothing, I would probably be thinking I should be running. Whereas when I'm running, I would never be thinking I should be sitting underneath the tree. Now that's most of a bottle of wine talking, but that's about as, as deeply philosophical as I think I can get about running. What is it like in your classroom? I don't know, John. I've never been a student in my classroom. Wouldn't have a clue. I like to have an open dialogue with uh, students in the classroom. I'm never, ever a superior in the classroom. An inch and a half. There you go, that's it. That's it, that's it. There's the bottle of wine done. If you could recommend one of your trips, adventures, experiences to followers, what would it be and why? No, I cannot uh, uh, give you that, Nick. Um, the world is in completely and utterly contextual to where... Uh, geez, Nick's question is um, a good indicator of how much uh, wine I've drunk. <laughs> uh, Nick's question, I can't answer this question cleanly. I, no, I, I can't answer your question really at all because I'm almost reluctant to finish this wine because I'm pissed. I'm kind of enjoying it, don't get me wrong. I'm kind of enjoying this prevailing of sitting in the field. <laughs> For the experiment of drinking a bottle of wine found on the side of the road while answering questions in the middle of the paddock, I think oh, I'm all right. <laughs> uh. I drank the wine on Monday, it's now Friday. Silage has been cut. My beard's got a little bit longer. I had a hangover for a day and a half, genuinely. And life moves pretty fast. For the next 14 months, you are going to get 14 films on YouTube. Uh, there's gonna be the two commutes, they're released really shortly. Uh, junk Cabin, a couple of other junk projects. I've got a project with May lined up. I've got a run, a walk and four river descents that are fairly unusual. They're coming out next year. It's all pretty exciting. And I, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>